I don't think I have to tell my most loyal viewers that what you see on your screen right now is a scary motherfucking game. But not only that, it's also one of the best composed games that Konami has ever released, and one of its most precious treasures. It's a combination of sleuthy mysteries that you must uncover while fighting and being chased by hideous monsters that will, frankly, make you go insane with fear. Okay, maybe not that much, but they sure are scary. This is the original, the one and only Silent Hill, a Konami creation that is the cause for thousands of sweaty palms of survival horror junkies all over the world, and another classic contribution from Levi in Pittsburgh. Gamers constantly compare and contrast between Silent Hill and the equally popular Resident Evil. One thing's for sure, it's hard to choose between the two. The line drawn has to be the preference of two types of third-person survival gaming categories. Either ethereal, nightmare-like puzzle psychological thriller with up to four different endings, or action-based shoot-em-up that is fairly linear, but nonetheless gripping. If the former is your preference, then, my friends, you will not be disappointed. Silent Hill is gritty as well as mind-bending in its atmospheric, eerie environment as you control Harry Mason, your everyday dedicated father, searching for his lost daughter Cheryl after he crashes his car en route to driving to Silent Hill for vacation. That's right, vacation. I seriously want to know what Lonely Planet book he was reading that told him Silent Hill is a place for father and daughter to spend a weekend. What we're seeing here is the school building, one of the first places Harry ends up on his wild goose chase. Silent Hill is great at making player one feel nervous and almost watched as you look around for clues to uncover secrets to a twisted puzzle where the routes you must take are guarded by these creepy looking, shall we say, school children with knives? Well, they weren't kidding around when they warn you that there are disturbing images in this game before even the title screen appears. I use the handgun a lot, especially since it's tough to knock down enemies at first with the steel pipe or slash them with a kitchen knife. The camera system, however, makes it rather difficult to aim sometimes, especially if your enemy is flying around your head like a mosquito. Your lapel flashlight serves its purpose, but it can also make it easier for monsters to spot you. One of your tools that really adds to Silent Hill's creepiness is the radio, warning you with ambient noise when a monster is approaching you, and after hearing it for a while, you won't soon forget it even after you turn off your console. Written puzzle clues are poetic and in a way beautifully written, usually spattered with blood to give you a feeling that someone had been there already. One qualm I have about Silent Hill is the way you move Harry around. His movement is fixed, meaning that if he is facing you on the screen, you still have to press up on the D-pad to move him forward. And there's no way to change it. It's the same issue I have with inverted controls. Silent Hill really runs your psychological state through a ringer, as your thirst to find clues to the next part of the game puts you through a gauntlet of creepily designed enemies and dark environments that might just have you screaming for mommy. I don't want my more timid fellow gamers who haven't played Silent Hill to miss out on it, so I'll offer a piece of advice. It's a lot easier to move through this game when you have a buddy around. Play it alone. If you dare. <laughs>